Good morning. Actually, no, it's not even good morning anymore. I messed that up already. Uh, this is a... He Damn it, I... You know what? Screw it. Uh, We're going to go with it anyway. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Zooming Who's Podcast, and I'm your host, Dustin Husky. I'm Kurt Antarpus, and it's afternoon. It's afternoon. It's actually nearly four in the afternoon. Oh, my goodness. Ah, uh, he is still on morning. Yeah. Morning Who's. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, you've mentioned that you've got stuff to talk about. Oh, yeah. That's right. I'll let you go because uh, I got nothing right now. <laughs> so, this is interesting. Uh, without thinking about it, I updated my Facebook header picture, the picture above your profile photo. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the same photo I was using, which is... The picture you took of me on um, on my car mm -hmm. in fursuit. It's been up there for a while, pretty much since we took the photo. So That's good. A November, so you know, a couple months. But I just cropped it, so it was like closer up, and um, completely forgot about the fact that I'm friends with about three people at my store who are not furry. Uh oh. Let me just say, they loved it so much. They're sharing it, commenting on it, and talking about it. Brad at work asked me about it. So I am a trailblazing poos. You are very popular. It's so funny, he mentioned it to me the other day, and I didn't even, it still didn't click until I looked at my phone this morning. And I was like, oh, that's the photo he was talking about. Oh, well. It's pretty cool. Everybody like, really likes it. I have a Facebook, but I'm almost never on it because you know what? I have better means of communication that I would rather use or even text. And uh -huh. I'm trying to get better with all of that. But I don't know. I've, I've totally turned my back on Facebook, but I... It's still functional, but I don't use it. But I'd rather have it around than not. Although I don't actually know if any of the people, since I left my job, have decided to find me out on Facebook. So I'll have to find out if that's actually the case, but I really doubt. It'd probably be good to keep up on it anyway, just to make sure in case they do find you. Yeah. Actually, I, I do need to change where I work on it, so that's something I'm going to have to do anyway. Yep. Just to, just to show, hey, doing something else. Yep. But. So, yeah, that's what I did. I accidentally outed myself as a furry to my coworkers, to yeah. non-furry. You know what? There are worse things that, that, oh, that you could out yourself on than just being a furry, because furry has now become so mainstream in the sense that it is mainstream, Though it's still a subculture anyway. But people know about it. So, again, there are worse things that... Aw. <coughs> there are worse things that you could out yourself on. Aw. Sound effect poos. Today is brought to us by Hoosk Coffee. Yes. Brewed by Hoosks. Yes. And Winking Owl. You know what? I want a bit of that. I. You know what? You're Give me some. Winking Owl. Um, is that proper stuff to make a wine cooler? It sure is. All you can right, take that Sprite and throw it right in there. Okay, because I'm on the mood to... Go for it, by all means. There we go. Because this weekend we're celebrating the Polecat's birthday, because his oh, yeah. birthday is on the 1st. Polecat birthday. But we're going to celebrate it this weekend anyway. Like He's going to be 21, isn't he? He's going to be 21. Holy crap. My kid brother is uh, is full getting on, old now. Full on adult now. Full on adult. I That's... mean, 18, you're considered an 
adult anyway, full. yeah. But I, I don't really consider it like full on adult until you hit 21. Yeah. That way you can do all of the things legally for the most part. Yeah. Oh, yeah, being 21. Yep. Going out for your first bar, which, you know what? Let's let's actually talk about... It's not to say that we like talking about the pandemic so much, but there's an interesting idea behind all of this, that there are people coming of age oh, yeah. right now. Like, you are pretty much like 70s, 80s poos. I'm very I much... I thought you were going to say that I, I just turned 21. I mean, going back to what I was saying, I am a 90s, 2000s husk. And I just spilled my wine cooler all, all over me. Uh -huh. And we grew up in the before times. Because yes. we're going to be describing this period as the, as the before Definitely times the before when times. you could literally do anything without the fear of getting sick from someone. Because when you got sick, we didn't think too much about it. Nowadays, yeah. it's just terrifying. There are kids that are currently right now turning 18 and 21 during this, this time that have no one to spend their birthday with because these are major milestone events because after 25 when you become a quarter of, of a century old yep. you kind of you kind of want to forget how old you are because aging and then from there I wouldn't want to say that think like time speeds up but I think at 25 things speed up by 27 28 things start to slow down again I don't know why Right now, it's just not so much the case of time going by, or that's just the pandemic. But now you've got kids who, kids, you've got young guys turning 21 for the very first time in a time when most bars are not even open, or that they are, and it's very, very limited. Yeah. You know what? It's not the same. Although, really, if you're going to be turning 21 and getting sloshed, you may as well do it at home. Because you know why? Be, be fucking responsible. Don't, don't drink and drive. Yeah. Frankly, I am all for getting people sloshed. But it's come to the point where you're just better off drinking at home, where it's safe and you don't have to worry about going anywhere. Just get shit-faced and not have to ever worry about needing to be somewhere in 8 right. to 12 hours. right. Do you remember what you did on your 21st? I didn't get shit-faced, but I went with a local to the world of beer in Milwaukee, where I didn't get carded at all. I, w I just walked in, uh, paid myself for like three three beers, but no one ever actually hmm. carded me until oh, six months after That's I turned. That's interesting. Then they say, okay, I, I got to get your card. And like, finally, someone's asked me for my card. Nowadays... Um, people keep asking me left and right and what, yeah. whatnot, but I for some carded. reason, well, I, I think it's just based on policy that you're better off to do it anyway or not. Especially when I have the blonde hair going on. Aw, young. They can't see the grays. Young, youthful poops. Um, I don't know. I'm, I look, I have not really changed much facially, so people card me anyway, which I, that's fine by me. It's what they need to do for their job, that's fine um but people coming of age during this this time during this pandemic where there's not much to do where the youth have squandered themselves just to reduce themselves to staying at, at home not doing a whole lot much when when you're 17 18 19 when you got a car you go practically everywhere yep. you do all the things and whatnot a lot more freely yeah for sure. When I was 17, 18, 19 as, as a furry, I went practically anywhere and everywhere with, with friends, going to meets, going to cons, the burning burning the midnight oil on the road, just cruising around town, having fun, um, trying not to get in, in trouble and, and whatnot. And nowadays, you really can't do that so easily. Now you're adding coffee or 
chocolate powder in, in, in the coffee and he had just added white Zinfandel so now he's got a coffee cooler that's let's go with that alcoholic hot cocoa coffee there we go um, I kind of take growing up for granted just because I, I realized wow um, I, I can't imagine being a lot more younger now and to understand that there's nothing that you can do right now because you literally can't do anything unless you risk yourself um, I and plus two with new job I don't think I'll be able to go to a con for a long while especially now that I'm in a union which is great but now with seniority um, apparently there is a process with that but I would get last picks for vacation days so literally I don't expect to go to many conventions in 2020 no in 2022 when they do come back but I've been to a few well I've, I've been to many conventions over the years that I'm not totally hurt by it well th think about it this way too you could still take time off it just won't be paid it won't be vacation pay no you could, you could request time off uh, no it's I actually don't know what what the process is at this job. If you if one or two people can be off at the same time, I don't know about that yet. Well, I'd find out. I would I'm definitely sure find could. out because if it's anything like my last job, where if one person's off, no one else can be off, even being sick off. There is probably plenty of drivers out there that you could technically have one or two or even three drivers off at any time, because you kind of expect that. And this place has seems to have big enough numbers for drivers that you would think you could have two or three guys off at any point yeah. so there might be a chance where I might be able to go to IFC or take some time off for first squared in, in, in the future I hope so actually I wouldn't be able to do first square next year because I won't get my vacation time until the 15th I might be able to squeak in uh, to put in vacation time for first squared so who knows that might be possible but anyway um, furries and non furries around the, this age have realized that with pandemic going on it's a lot harder to be sociable now it's harder to go out and do things because you're limited to what you can do yeah um, new furries that have just become furries in 2019 or the early stages of 2020 uh, well, I feel bad for you. You just got yourself blue-balled by wanting to go to meets and, and cons, and then all of a sudden, pandemic hits right around the time when you start to get yourself um, a, a, acquainted with your local communities, and now you can't do anything. Or, new furries during the pandemic realize, shit, I just became a furry. I can't do anything right now because... Well, nothing's going on. The upside of that is they may not really understand or realize the magnitude of things that they're missing out on either. That's true. Whereas us, us both have been in this fandom for quite a long time that we, we understand that we miss this stuff. But we're not totally hurt right now because we understand what's going on, what you need to do to keep yourself safe. But... We've been to plenty enough cons to where we could look at other people's con videos and reminisce and whatnot. Yeah. And re rewatch fun panels that we've seen in the past. So in a sense, for us it sucks, but we're not totally hurt by it because we've definitely gone through a lot of cons in the past. But for those that have only done one or two con, uh, one or two cons, one or two meets before pandemic hit, they're like being blue balled for something to do. And even non-furries, uh, being able to drive for the very first time, and now you can't go anywhere, you really can't see anyone. And you know what? You're kind of limited to what you can do. And kids, uh, born around this, this well, not about born around this this time, because if you're born in 2020, by the time that this pandemic is somewhat over, you would barely start to record your earliest memories at the age of three or by the age of five 
And the pandemic didn't really matter too much to you because you didn't really know enough of what's going on in the world to understand the, the, pretty much the implications. But if you were five years old during 2020, and by the time you're six, seven, or eight, by 2022 or 2023 when this starts to calm down, you'll actually start to, you are actually learning in a whole new world that is just still new to you. This is becoming your normal. Or else for you and I, this is not normal for us. No. So in some cases, what's not normal for us is being very normal for others because this is, this is a world that they're growing into. Right. So someone who is seeing masks being worn is seeing this as a normal thing to wear. Whereas for you and I, yeah, we, we, we wear masks because we're not total bitches. I mean, sometimes we're okay. But sometimes we're bitches. <laughs> um, Thanks, Andorina. You know what? I don't mind the, the idea of wearing masks because this is a benefit for society. Yeah. But it is a pain in the ass. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Could you it imagine is... being born into this? Just like basically, babies just come out with a mask on their face right out of the womb. That would be funny. But imagine, in, in, in actually here, no. Let's think about this. A baby is is born. The mother gets a chance to hold her her child. Then you, well, doctors are already masked up. But when they take family photos of, of you, not only are, are the doctors have masks, which to us is normal, because yeah. we expect it of, of doctors. Yeah, regardless. But now you, you see mother, father, and that's it. Maybe not even father. It may just be mother. Yeah. That your mom is the only one in this hospital room, and the doctors have your phone to take pictures of you when you were born. However, there are no close family around to congratulate you coming into the world because we're living in different times the f the photos that of you and your family may not be for a few weeks yeah. there's baby f there's puppy photos of of me where you know m m my mom my dad my my grandparents and whatnot in the hospital yeah. me I new who's in in the world and whatnot yeah. Um, my new job, since I work for the hospital systems now, I'm not even allowed in as, as far as beyond front desk. We're just living in a world where, hey, uh, this might be permanent to, ho to hospitals now. Yeah. Where they may not even want to have non-important people beyond doors that does not concern them anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> They'll just say, drop off your relatives at the uh, lobby and be gone. If you don't need to be here, don't be here. Right. Things are certainly changing, and I can see a lot of this stuff being permanent in, in, in hospitals. I don't think hospitals realize how much a pandemic will affect their operation. Oh, I'm sure. And I'm do. sure... Because there's very, very few people that are not essential to be in the hospital will make their days a lot more easier. I think hospitals will simply say, well, oh, fuck it, we we would rather have this all, all the time. Only have the bare essential people that need to be there should be there. Yeah. And the patients, that's it. Some of this stuff will never change. Some of the stuff we will probably see change a little bit. Some stuff will revert back to normal, and then other things just may not ever come back again. But, but it's got to be sucked to be it. it it's it's got to be awful to be a kid, a young adult right now, because you see the world in such a different light now. Stuff that you've not experienced in full yet. Whereas you and I grew up in a time of what was considered normal for us. These kids are growing up in a time where now this is the new normal, and possibly the long-term normal. So, uh, it's just a. With that being said about hospitals, 
Uh, here's a, a kind of an example uh, that affects my family directly. Uh, my sister, her husband, uh, his mom is in the hospital. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're not allowing any family to even be with her unless they're essential. So, <laughs> well, my sister-in-law, Laura, who you met mm -hmm. at Becca's wedding, is a nun. Yeah. She is an essential worker. So she's the only one. So, but she's like, I'm not leaving her. I can't leave her. No one else can be with her. Really? At least her daughter can be with her. I mean, Ben's going there to, you know, just to pop in and visit and say hi and then... And then run. And then get shoot out. Yeah. But at least Laura can be there with her. Because yeah. Because if, if it weren't for that, she'd be in there alone. Which, in a time like now, is the worst thing to and be. she's diabetic and has liver, liver failure and all these other things. She's on her last legs right now. Which is unfortunate. And when you're at that point, you need to be surrounded by family. That too. People on their deathbed yeah. right now is crucial. And right. hospices... Right. Oh my goodness, to be in a hospice about now. Yeah. And if for those that don't know what a hospice is, it's technically a comfort area uh, for... It's a service it's, that's provided for people that are getting ready to pass on. Right. It's, it's, it's meant to make their last days, weeks, or months the best that they could possibly get. And painless. And painless. But nothing is probably more painful than not to see anyone... Yeah. Especially in your last hours. That's what she's going through. That right is now. sad. Mm -hmm. Thank God Laura threw that card in, played that card. To be a nun? Yeah. But she's been a nun since she was 20, 21. So, yeah, she's there with her. And she's awesome. She is. Uh, but I'm me, at least glad that she's able to be the only bit of human contact of right. her family left in the world to at least see her on a regular basis. And it just happens to be she's just a nun, but we also actually, family. We actually briefly dated in high school. That, that's funny. Me and Laura. Amazing. She's a great person. I love her. Yeah. yeah, things are definitely changing, yeah. and I, I haven't e even thought about people on, on their deathbed or in hospitals where yeah. um, if, if if things are looking rough, it's it's good to have some family to visit. Like uh, my uh, grandfather had stage uh, 3 colon cancer yep. back in 2014 and 2015. Yep. He's in remission now and hasn't been cancerous since. And that was, yeah, this is going on six years and he's still fine. I'm sure they do yearly checks to make sure. Oh, yeah, they, they actually do. But so far, they say nothing's changed. That's great. Um, it'd be rough for him to not see anyone. If if, if he was going through his, his cancer treatment mm. now. Yeah, that would be um, really hard. Uh, we don't know. We don't know possibly if he would have flasted as, as well as he did. It's possible that, you know, not seeing anyone close could have a drastic effect on how he would have recovered. Um, yeah, that's just some really deep stuff to think about. Yeah. So you really have to wonder, um, are, are people dying a lot more... Not easy... I, 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 I don't want to say the word easily so much, but are people passing on... Because sometimes the will to live is based on those who visit them, yeah. gives them the strength to continue on, and then fighting whatever. It definitely has. It definitely has some kind of effect on it. It definitely has an effect. It has a positive effect. Is there a negative effect that you can't see anyone yeah. once they're in the hospital now that they're literally seeing doctors that say that they care about them, but really they have so many patients that have gone and survived that they're indifferent. I'm going to be honest. They're doing their job. They're doing their their job. They can be f friendly to the families, 
but they're literally doing their their job. Yeah. They're not there to make friends. Right. Especially not to make friends because doctors see life and death every day. Although, I'll say this. My dad, uh, one of the doctors that helped save him when he had his broken back and his broken ribs and his collapsed lung, uh, and that guy was a friend to him for like 30, 40 years. Well, because your dad had to go through a year's worth of habilitation and therapy. Longer. Longer. So, at that point, you, not to say that you're forced, but you are literally forced to get along with the doctor who is willing to help you. Well, yeah. And if you're you lucky have, enough, you have a good doctor that, yeah. that you can get along with and truly cares about you. Yeah. That is some deeper shit right there of, um, of like really uh, clinical visits, hospitals and whatnot. Yep. They won't let you be on uh, the front lobby. Nope. Yes, if you need to use the restroom, they will gladly show you the way. But beyond that, they won't do anything unless you are a patient. They'll kick you right out. Oh, yeah. But since I'm working for a transportation company for the DOA, which is Department of Aging, and also working with DOT, the Department of Transportation, uh -huh. I'm through two agencies now. Uh, he is Agent Husk. I am Agent Husk. Um... I am technically considered a first responder and a. I thought I was an essential worker before. I'm so much higher in that chain right now mm. that because of my vest, people don't have to question me. Yeah. I say, Can I use your restroom? And they're like, Oh, sure thing. And there's no 20 questions to ask about what I'm there for. Right. Because now that I am higher up in the world of. Um, these government agencies and literally being the transportation for the the aged, the disabled, and the broken, um, which is a really good field job. It's just it's just the remembering of what to exactly do to each each clinic. But beyond that, picking them up and dropping them off at at, at their homes is pretty standard. That's good. Um, it's just dropping them off at the clinics, the hospital, since they're are over forty. I have to remember exactly what to exactly do with them there. Getting there, it's through GPS. I don't have to worry about knowing how to get there. It's just the in individual, um, oh my God, going through downtown Milwaukee is fucked up. Oh mm. my God. I'm not going to go deep into it, but oh, fuck driving there. It's a mess. Oh my God, it's a fucking goddamn mess. Um, however, me and my 20-foot-5 long bus is able to get through every single street that I was told to go through except for one which I had to back out onto a one-way street because two fuck nuts can't park their cars making my bus way too wide for the hole that I have to go through I made a phallus joke um, uh -huh. other than that I've gotten so used to driving my bus it feels like driving a car while knowing you're driving a bus you don't think you're driving a bus yeah. which is kind of nice so I, I'm at that comfort level where um, driving a bus or a county city bus will not bother me anymore yeah because I know how to turn it's just uh, literally taking patients from bus to their doctor is what stresses me out the most because there's so many different procedures right now with COVID in, in, in place and I have a feeling a lot of these places that have been affected by, by COVID I don't think they say, oh, yeah, when things go back to normal, when my trainers say that, and I can think of the back of my mind. But what happens if that never happens? Yeah. There are some of these services that we do may not ever come back because things have changed so drastically. They need to adapt to what can happen now. What happens if there's something worse than COVID? Don't even say that. I don't want to jinx anything. But <clears throat> what if it comes to a point where we literally take our patients or our, our clients to the front doors of hospitals that we're not even as first responders aren't even allowed to go past the doors. That's when, that's when we know that things have changed so much that they'll never be the same again. But that may be years before that ever happens. And you know what? That'll be good enough time for me to get accustomed with this new job, which may be the best time to be in this job is to, uh, when it's taken easily and whatnot, but... So, just a brief 
change of gears here. I had something else I wanted to discuss. Was this what you wanted to discuss? or Something else that I wanted to just okay. bring up. Okay, cool. Uh, minimum wage increase. Have you seen this on the news and all that? They're talking mm -hmm. about it like... It's a pretty big thing now. Really? Because yeah. I've seen while while driving around Milwaukee, actually that's or that's only where I drive is in Milwaukee County. Right. I'm noticing flags yeah. of raise the wage on bridges yes. all over the county. Here's the thing. <laughs> it's eventually gonna happen. Let's It'll face have to. it. It yeah. has to. But here's the thing that I've noticed as being my type of essential worker. Right. Corporations like Small Mart. Small Mart have already taken the next step. Okay. Number one. Yes, I told you about this. Stockers are going to be going up to fifteen dollars an hour. And 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 what are you? We don't know yet. Probably up to sixteen an hour. Holy moly, Walmart. But, here's the thing. Our prices have already started going up. For products? Yes. Oh, come on, Walmart. You're before, making hand over fist with Before the wage has even gone up. They're already raising their costs. They're already raising the <laughs> wow. costs. Wow. What a shysty company. I know. <laughs> it's such a fuck you up our butts. You're going to be making more money. Oh, but wait. Everything's just going to cost more. So, infl inflation at work here. How, how? So, if something costs $5, how much is it actually going up? Some of them up almost a dollar. Okay, that's beyond in, in, in inflation. Yeah. Average U.S. inflation each year is anywhere from 20 to 30 cents a year. Most, on increase. Most of my fresh produce has been 20, 20 to 30 cents. That That is an ordinary year's worth of inflation on the dollar. But usually the way they do it, to make it seem like the little guys like us are getting ahead, Yeah. they wait a month or two. Just a month. Just enough time for people to be able to pay their rent, have a little bit of extra money saved, and then they inflate the rest of the cost of stuff. This time they're doing it before. That's evil. That is evil. I'm sitting here looking at these prices and I'm like, we've got this uh, corned beef hash, not corned beef hash, corned beef and cabbage kit mm -hmm. that we're selling for coming up for St. Patty's Day. It's $18. It's barely enough food for two people. Wow. So expensive. It's a quarter of a head of cabbage. Pretty nice sized corned beef. And then what else is in there? Some potatoes. In Denmark or in the Netherlands, the average McDonald's worker there in Europe yeah. makes about twenty one fifty an hour. That's that's crazy. And you know how much their burgers went up in, in cost? Nothing. Well, actually, no. It, it went up 20 cents, but stayed at 20 cents. Still, 20 cents is still average in inflation cost each year, so that, right. that's to be expected. But they're making 21.50 an hour. They're making more... Um, they're making more than a lot of people would, would want to work. That's an actual livable wage, for God's sakes. And McDonald's em em employees in Europe get vacation time between four and six weeks. They get mm. better health care. Full-timers, we're talking. Oh, yeah. And I don't think in Europe they are going to screw people. Because in Europe, um, they actually have brains. Why am I going to work only part-time when I could work full-time? So Here's in Europe, the they don't actually... Um, in in Europe, it, they don't have the lazy boy couch syndrome as as we do. Where yeah, because we do. If yep. something yep. happens there, they're going to be out striking. At most McDonald's here, there is two full time employees. Yeah. One in the morning, one at night. If they're overnight store like in downtown Chicago, a third. Yeah. Everybody else is 
is part time. Which is a shame. <laughs> Which is why they have a revolving door of employees there. If they don't see they won't give people over thirty hours. See that that that's awful. And I don't wanna say that you should make a, a, a lifelong career with, with Walmart or McDonald's or whoever you but if you can pay someone a decent amount of money and provide them some benefits, mm -hmm. someone would be perfectly happy working for McDonald's at a store. If they get paid 15, 16, 17 an hour, they may be the best um, professional McDonald's em employee that branch has ever had. Yeah. Now imagine that if 10 people per shift were like that. Not only would people... Cause I don't know about how you feel about certain restaurants, not just brands. I'm just talking about restaurants of a brand. Right. I avoid some branches of Burger King, Walmart, Taco Bell because they fuck up your order and whatnot, and you think, well, I'm not going back there because they fuck it up. Yeah. Imagine if everyone cared about their job. It, did, it didn't matter where to go to get your food. It's still the same food, but hey, if you have happy employees, if if you have happy employees, you will see it as a customer. Say, hey, these people are happy. They're not going to poison my food. They won't spit in my food. And they seem to care about what they do. Yeah. I will keep going back to this place because they take their job seriously. My order gets done properly. And I can appreciate that. And they don't waste my time. I will come back here because I can support them. There's two things going on at those places like that. Number one, if you pay people a decent rate, you will attract a better quality employee. Yeah. But here's the problem I see at most McDonald's, at least the ones by, down by where I lived in Aurora and Naperville. Most of the employees did not speak English. And the orders were always messed up. See, that's not so much a problem with the company. That's just a problem with workers. Yeah. It's one thing if you don't know how to speak English, but you ask, you learn a bit. And I'm not bashing people no. that don't speak the language. It's just what happened. I mean, I would go there. I would pick up food for Ken because that's the only time I ever went to McDonald's oh. is when he would say, hey, can you pick up food for McDonald's on the way here? So I'd take his order. I'd go there, place the order, and they always forget something always that's why you should always check your order yeah i would see it on the screen i would see it on the receipt i would check the order most of the time anytime i would check it they got it right but the few times i, w I didn't bother checking it they, they got it wrong they got it wrong that's why you always should check yeah um so it wasn't always wrong but it was wrong whenever i didn't Whenever I decided not to check it. Uh, you you, you kind of jinx yourself by yeah. doing that. That's why chicken nuggets ended up halfway across the room. See, it's a revolving door effect that fucks up a lot of companies and why Walmart and Mac McDonald's are kind of called a McJob because no one's happy with it. And it's not, it's not very... Um, uh, it's. I'm trying to find a word. It's like, oh, it's very posh of a job. Uh, it's. It's not a. It's not a desirable job because no. of the environment. It's a job to to take when you're between jobs. Right. When you're down on. When you're down on your luck. And desperate you can't... for money, and that's the only place that'll hire pretty much everybody. If you pay people a good amount of money, not only will people stay. Yeah. You get high quality workers that know their job well. Yep. Yeah. That means that you can actually trust these employees to do the right thing and to train other em employees to do the right thing. When you have a revolving door, kind of like Walmart, there's not enough experienced workers around to keep that tradition going of doing the right thing, doing your job well. You get haphazard quality control. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, you had one good staff for one period of time, and then all of a sudden, all those people are gone. Now you're you're left with a despot of um, people that generally don't care about what what they're doing because they're not going to be there for more than a month, more than two weeks. Um, 
quality is going to suffer, and then people complain about that, yeah. which is the whole classic, oh, yeah, I'm going to complain about McDonald's because they get everything wrong. is because people don't stay there long enough to care. Um, if you pay people $15 an hour to work at McDonald's for eight hours a day, flipping patties, you're going to make sure that those patties are good because you don't want to get complaints. Nope. Because you have no excuse on a motivation level to be totally downtrodden of where you work. Just to give you an idea of the revolving door for, our, for us, there's a small handful of employees that are there that have been there for a while. But most of the people that I see doing all the shopping, yeah. like the personal shoppers, whoever was there a month and a half, two months ago, most of them are not there now. It's all new people. And the average store manager at a Walmart stays six months to a year. And that's a manager position. I see manager. That's a $220,000 job. That's that's bad when your managers can't stay at a company that, that long. Germantown nah. had a manager that was walked out because he was stealing. Wow. Okay, well, that's on him, though. I know it's on him, but... That's on him. $220,000 a year is not stealing? enough money that you have to steal from the company. Wow, that's bad. That's horrible. That's, that's a lot of horse shit right there. <laughs> that's bad. At that money, I wouldn't be stealing, period. And you know what? I don't make that much money, but I don't steal. No. Because I can't afford uh, time in prison or fines or whatever and a permanent public record yep I can't afford that with what money I end I end up making but why is it that when people have a just oodles of, of money burning in their pocket and they're the ones stealing because yep. they want to have more well you have more than what the average person does but now you want to steal damn you would think it'd be the opposite where desperate people are gonna steal to get ahead because they know it's the one way to survive most people at our um, pay raise or pay grade yeah. or range. All the people I know, you and me and many others, I don't know of anyone who steals from their company. Never. However, it's interesting that people like Bernie Madoff or uh, Ponzi or whatever, all these rich fuckers, even the 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 man who should not be named. We'll find ways to go around the law to keep more money or to make more money. Yeah. But they have all this money, much more than the average person will ever own in, in their lifetime. It's like they feel like they're uh, like they need untouchable. More. Yeah. Because they, cause they, they're, they quote unquote are worth so much. They think that they're above the law because. Right. Because they make so much. Yeah. Which, which is an odd, fun observation when you think about it because yeah. all the people that cannot afford a parking ticket are the ones who are going to park all right yeah. um, or the ones who are going to speed are either a people who are just clueless enough to not look at their speedometer or um, people who can afford the ticket because they need to get somewhere fast they'll do it anyway whereas I don't want to get a uh, I, I don't want to speeding ticket of two hundred dollars no because you know what that's a bit of my paycheck that is gone and it's uh, it's on your record for I think what four four years and they take away four points yeah it's it's not it's not worth it because it's the cost of it's gonna hurt you more than the rest of it is unless it's prison time and there's nothing worse than that but um, I've been telling people to convince people, but I don't convince enough to where that I'm trying to brainwash them. Because you know what? People do their own thing, and I can respect that. But I tell people, if you're being paid more money, what, what would you do with that? Would you become a better worker or a terrible worker and say, well, that would motivate me to do more or mo motivate you to do the right thing? Why is that? Because you're not totally stressed about financial things. You, you can focus on, on your job than focus on paying your bills. The average American is not focused on their 
job, whether if they are a patty flipper at McDonald's to the CEO of a, well, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm trying to make a point. A CEO of, of a company is not worried so much about where he's going to be in his house in the next five, ten years right. compared to someone uh, who is making $7 an hour at McDonald's um, wondering what happens to them if they can't pay their rent. Right. If you pay people properly, they will not have to worry about the basic things that they shouldn't have to worry about anymore. Um, paying their car payments because they need a car to get to work. If if they don't get a car, they don't work, and then all of a sudden that makes them homeless. There is a huge chain reaction that if one thing is missing, it literally affects the rest of it. When you're a millionaire and you're making millions a, a, a year, yeah, you can smash up every car you own and you can still bounce back by buying another car. Um, average person cannot afford smashing up their car even if it wasn't their fault and they still got some money from the insurance company to buy a new car, they'll never get a better car than what they just had. Um, and I know people who... I know people who got their cars smashed up. The insurance company pays them some money. They spend less on the next car and pocket it or spend it because they know that they needed the money badly. Hmm. Um, where they probably should have paid more for the next car... They only spent what they needed, and they spent the rest on what they did need. Yes. Hmm. This 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 country has um, has some sick individualistic uh, in individualistic fetishes that um, humanity is a social creature that requires the help of of a team for everyone to survive and to thrive effectively. It's like a wolf pack. A lone wolf will not get anywhere. You need a pack to survive. Yep. <clears throat> and you know what? Americans, everyone else on the planet has a collective mindset. Americans are the few people on this planet where it's an individualist, uh, blah, blah. it is an individualistic approach that, hey, if I can't support myself, I should not get supported at all or um, oh, well, that would be bad because, you know, that's overreaching. No. You do realize that if other people are, are watching your back and you can watch theirs, society would be a better place. You'll keep people honest, but you also help people when in need. Because when you're in need, people help you. Yep. That's, that's, that's what a wolf pack is. And you understand why wolf packs are so successful. Right. Americans just think, oh, i got to put myself by my bootstraps. Well, okay, well, we'll see you in six months, and you'll be reduced to a former shell because you realize that don't work. Yep. You're going to see a lot more worse before it gets better, and often enough, a lot of people don't come back when things get worse. It'll take them years, maybe decades, before they can bounce back, um, which is a shame in this country because this is the country of opportunity. It is. And there's no opportunity for anyone here unless you're rich. And it's the rich that don't need more opportunities any more than they already have. It's funny you bring that up, too, because I, I'm constantly faced with having to enlighten my friends from other countries because they think if they move here, they'll just instantly become rich and they won't have to worry about money. And I have to tell them that's not the case. It's going to be a huge struggle because things are not any better here. The grass is not always greener, and such is the case with with America. There was an Italian couple that wanted to move to America after watching all these TV reality shows and whatnot, and because uh, um, we because all Americans live like TV reality stars. Yeah, and um, when when Michael Moore broke it to them that um, how, how many vacation days do they have in Italy? Mm -hmm. And the couple said that each had about two and a half months worth of paid, protected 
vacation time. Wow. Then Michael Moore told them, well, if you come to America, you, you, you don't even get anything. And that's when they were shocked. They were in disbelief. Their jaws dropped to the floor. They didn't think that actually we had, they thought we had the same amount of uh, benefits as they did. They just wanted to move to America because it seemed easier there. Well, now they were totally like, okay, well, I guess we won't move to America because it seems we got it easier here in Italy than of all places in America. Um, when there are Europeans that actually look around here, or even without even Michael Moore telling them, there are, there are Europeans that move to this country and then move back realizing, wow, this place is such the Wild West. Um, they're like, wow, Americans weren't kidding when, when they say you fend for yourself because no one else is watching. Or, yep. No one's got your back in this country. Um, hell, shit. Um, um, the America of Europe, the United Kingdom, because that's what I like to call the United Kingdom, is, um, is the American-European country, if that makes sense. Even they have about five weeks paid vacation at the get-go. That's what you start off with, is five weeks paid vacation. Isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. And they have, I think, 21 or 28 national holidays that you're off and paid. And yet they are the, they are considered the laughing stock of Europe in just terms of Brexit and whatnot. They're like un understanding, oh my God, what the hell is going on? And Britain, oh, Britain's doing a lot better than we are. I don't want to say that I am like bashing on the British because actually the British, I love your country, I love your comedy. Um, it's just. We are totally batshit crazy here. And to other Europeans that look at Brexit and say, wow, Britain, you've really stumbled low, but at least you're not Americans. Um, it's just incredible that um, around the world they got it right. And we're the only country that's industrialized and somewhat first world power that doesn't have any protection for, an for anyone. And the only time that it happened was during the Great Depression with uh, Social Security and whatnot. Because, you know, um, you're, you're going to need money because we all know you're not going to save any money at, at the end of retirement. That's the only way to keep you afloat. Because yep. we know that you're not going to save any money because you know why? Like back then, we can't save any we, we can't save any money because we're using it because we're being uh, totally sold out by everyone here. Um and we're glad that Social Security does exist, because without it, people would be unemployed. Why? Because the older generation won't relinquish their good-paying jobs for those that who are young enough to begin their, their lives working those jobs. So these older people that should have retired at 65, which back in the day, companies would often enough force everyone Everyone from the janitor of, of a company to the CEO and president of, of a company are forced to retire at 65 because that's what America had decided for retirement age. Is that, hey, you can work till 65, but when you turn 65, you give up the ghost of your job at a company so that someone else can take it so that there's a chance or whatever. There are people that I know that are still working at 72, 80, 95. Why are these people still working after all these decades? Enjoy life. Yeah. You just worked your whole entire life without enjoying any of it. You know what I would like? I think Social Security should be the blanket for everyone. My belief is that you should retire at the age of 50. You work till 50 and the state takes care of you. Yeah. Because the state will still take better care of you than your own company will. Yeah. And the government's not really that good, but hey, at least if you force the hand of the government to work in favor of the people, in a perfect world, oh yeah, it'll be totally be 
possible. Especially your old company. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the government will take care of my old company to, to stay alive in the market, yet they won't even actually take care of their own employees. It's just a total shit show. Um, I don't know. Uh, I still think if you if you raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour, you will see a huge, huge improvement on the quality of life for every American. That's to be expected. Every single time that the minimum wage was increased in this country, there was more spending. Companies did a lot better for themselves because people had more money. When you don't give anyone a, a chance to thrive financially and, and economically, companies are always going to charge more for their products because, hey, people aren't spending as much, so we're going to charge more for those that aren't buying on those that are buying. It's a vicious cycle. If you give a chance that people who are willing to spend money, make sure that they're making enough money to pay for the products and services you are offering. Because at the end of the day, if no one's going to be buying your stuff, you either have to A, make it cheaper, or B, pay, pay people more. And companies are certainly not going to uh, decrease the cost of their services or their products so that people can afford it. You are better off paying people more money to then afford the services that they're currently providing. It just makes better sense that, that way. Otherwise, it shows that a company is greedy to say, hey, you, you can't afford a $20,000 compact car, which why, as in the last episode, why are compact cars getting so expensive? They used to be called economy cars for a reason. Your good old econo boxes. There's a reason why back in the day we called them econo boxes because you know why? They were cheap boxes on wheels that anyone can afford because they were bare bones, basic, and nothing to really look at. They just meant to be basic transportation. Yep. Now those same, those same cars, 20, 30, 40 years later, Oh my God, it's got every little bit of American luxury because Americans have a hard-on for luxury. Every American wants to be a millionaire even though they only make 20 grand a year. Hmm. Oh yes, you can buy that Lexus. Oh, you want to buy a Chevrolet with every single damn option? Oh, yes, certainly you can. Can you afford any of it? No. Oh yes, let's, let us buy a 3,500 square foot house in the middle of nowhere. Let's make it... Let's call it McMansions or a warehouse. You just bought yourself a warehouse in perfect good old American suburbia. Can you afford it? No, because you're making money from a, a shithole of a company that barely pays you anything. But good old banks, oh yeah, good old American banks are going to give you any credit loan that you want because they know they can't get the money from you. And when shit gets rough, they will be getting a repo man to repossess everything that you own so that you can actually pay off your own debt. Mm -hmm. And often enough, you just become homeless. I don't know. I I'm just ranting about the stupidity of how this, this country functions. Uh, you want people to buy cars? Make cars cheap again. You, wanna, you want people to not rent apartments, which I find it to be the, the, the pox. The pox of the American landscape is apartment complexes. There are more apartment complexes being built right now than there are homes. However, the average apartment that's being built today is any costs more than eight hundred dollars a month, and you can't even find that number anymore. They're like about a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a month, and you know what? The average American can't even. Uh, the average American makes about two grand a month. How the hell do you think they're going to afford $1,600 a month? Oh, they have eight people living in one apartment. Just so that they can save any bit of money. Uh, it's just... To rewind real quick mm -hmm. about cars. What is your opinion on all the electronics that goes into cars now? Wouldn't you think it would drive the cost down because there's less mechanical... 
physical, mechanical, and more electronical. Electronical. More electronic. Devices. Devices. Well, we like to believe that cars have improved in quality over time, and to that degree, yes, they have. However, when something breaks down, what happens to a car? The whole thing shuts down. Well, I don't know about the whole thing shuts down, but let's say your power locks stop working in your car. When the car is about 15, 20 years old, do you fix it? No. Because it's not worth it, right? You just get a new car. Well, the average American gets a new car, but let's right. say you're strapped for cash. Let's say your car, for example, your air conditioning stops working. For your age of car, for how good of a shape your, your car is, your car is most certainly worth getting fixed. But the average American? Do you think the average American is going to uh, spend 1000 to $1,600 to get their car air conditioner fixed? Because we're living in a warmer world where... You definitely want air, air conditioning. It is a nice luxury. Do you think the average American is going to want to spend more money they don't have on a car that they obviously can keep using without air conditioning? Many Americans just say, fuck it, we, we just don't have air conditioning in this car. Here's my point, though. Should, should extra options actually make a car cheaper? Is my that question, what you... No, here's my oh. question. Well, yeah, um, not just that, not the extra options. As a whole, do you think it costs less money to make cars these days or more than, say, your Buick Skylark? So, there's, there's always cost of manufacturing and then there's retail cost. Right. So. But I'm looking at just the base, like what it takes to make a Buick Skylark. Back in the day, how much it costs to make that car. Considering that there was really no modern technology in the car. Other um, than a really solid, solid car. I mean, as far as the frame, as far as, I mean, it's a heavier car in general. Uh, the cost of the metal. Actually, it, what's actually funny, that Skylark weighs no more than your car. Right. Actually, oh, it's, it's not a, heavier. It's not that, it, it's not as heavy as I think it is. And I thought it was, he, I thought it was heavier too. Your car and my car weigh about exactly the same. But the thing is, there is nothing in terms of technology in the car. That's why. Right. Your car... It's all analog. Yes. Your, your car... Like the, the speed speedometer gauge and all that, the, ga the gasoline gauge, that's all uh, analog, considered analog. You have power windows. You have power locks. You have luxury seats. You have power seats. You have manual windows. Yes. That's that that and a radio. So here's my point. You would think that older car would cost less. I don't know. I would think it costs. I think okay. So let me actually explain it like this. Go for it. So back in the day, American exceptionalism was you build the best damn thing you 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 possibly can and still make money on it. Right, because the whole point back then was built to last. Yes, exactly. Because people weren't buying a new car every year. No. They, they still did, car. but the average American still kept their car for six, eight, eight years. But because... Some longer. Oh, yeah. The thing is, though, General Motors back in the 60s was a much more honest company than it is today. Um, a Chevy Silverado will rust away in four years' time in the state of Wisconsin. A brand new truck will rust away oh, yeah. in four, five, six years' time, and it'll be just a rusting hulk in ten years' time and then jumped. My Skylark has no rust proofing to any degree, but yet it still lasts 53 years after the fact. 54 years. What is the exterior of the car made of? Steel. And it's, it's not even rust-proofed. See, that's the point that I'm making, though. Steel. What is the exterior of my car made of? Steel. My car? Actually, it's galvanized steel. Your car has actual rust-proof additives in the steel when it was made. Thus, it actually inhibits uh, the formation of rust on, on, on your car. doesn't really add much to the weight of the steel itself. But it is a better quality steel. What's the exterior of your car, the Kia? 
galvanized steel like your car. GM didn't put galvanized steel panels on any of their cars until the late 70s. So by 67, none of their cars had any rust proofing. Um, my, actually, my cars got um, a, a factory rust proofing only in the wheel wells. That's it. The rest of the car is totally ready to be munched away by rust. And you know what? Even if it is, which it is to a, a good point. It, the one thing about that car, it needs a new floor, but... Right. The beauty about an old car is that they're so well made, yet manufacturing back then didn't take account that we could still make a cheaper car and make more money. They still made a quality car and still made money, but they didn't make much profit. But that's okay because they made millions of them. Nowadays, they're making fewer cars, so now they have to make them incredibly expensive to make profit on it. Um, the 80s. The 80s were a perfect time of let's build a shitbox and... Actually, it's still a time when the cost of manufacturing is still low, the quality was still high, but they still made somewhat of a profit on each car. What's the car that everybody owned in the 80s? Like, mid to late 80s? It's fine. Oh, it's yours? Oh, okay, that scared me. Um, you had a Chevrolet Chevette. Yes. Every person in my high school owned a Chevette. Yeah. They got in an accident. One of my best buddies got in an accident. Somebody bumped into him. Yeah. They were standing there talking about what to do about the damage of the cars. And while they were standing there talking about it, the dent went like this. It popped back out. Mm. Really? That's impressive for and a they were like, Okay, well, I guess no damage done. And they just parted ways. Parted ways. It was in a, a good part where it was like, it wasn't close to an edge. It was just in the middle and it just kind of right. popped back out. So, I'm just going to say this. As, as far as the car example is concerned, the more technology you add to a car, the more expensive it's going to be outright. Yeah. Um, back then, a Buick was considered a, a sport luxury car. Nothing sporty, but it was considered to be sportier than a Oldsmobile or a Cadillac, but it had some luxury features that weren't present in Chevrolets and Pontiacs. However, my car has no computer. Mm -hmm. This is even before com computer command control was even a thing for GM. Yet, for how expensive that car was, I will tell you this. I forget how much, I think the car was worth $3,200 brand new or something like that. It's in 1967. Mm -hmm. In today's money, that's $32,000. Yeah. For a sport luxury car. Nowadays, you, you'd be lucky to, I don't know, I, th I, th I think you'd be able to. I just think... This country's on a luxury price kick that if you're spending lots of money, you're, you're going to feel good about yourself saying, I deserve this, when in, when in reality, you actually don't. You should only live by your own means because that way you can be more happier. But the problem is Americans are not like me. Where you live within your means and you're happier that way, um, Americans spend money to make themselves feel better. Oh my goodness, I just spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. Americans will spend gobs of money on shit they don't need to make themselves feel better. That is Reaganomics at work. Spend as much money, don't save a single cent, because you're not going to live long to use any of it by the time you grow old. Yeah. Um, I know people that live by that. Oh, yeah. I just um, think... Um, I really do. Just pay pay people properly. Yeah. You'll have better workers. You'll have better productivity. You you pay people like shit. They're gonna treat the company like shit because they don't give a fuck. Why should um? It's kind of like with with my past company. Why should I give a fuck about the success of my company if they don't even pay me properly? Yeah. So. So actually, you were saying something about the minimum wage. Yeah. Expand on that. 
there's really nothing else to it other than the fact okay. that I kept noticing prices of, of random things going up and I just mm. immediately I thought oh they're doing this preemptively to prepare for all the things that we spend money on as what happens need. if the minimum wage never actually comes through now yeah. you just got higher prices they can they change their prices at, at a, on a whim because they can so in two months' time, they're going to realize nothing's going to happen, and it'll drop the price again. As soon as they notice a product is not moving as fast, they drop prices. Yeah, it's actually exactly what it is. Um, Just like with gas. Uh, the minute people stopped driving, what happened to the gas prices? They went down. They went way down. 98 cents a gallon down. You know why there's so many commercials about... Um, Actually, you know what? We'll actually touch base on that. Stuff that doesn't move as fast get a decrease and people notice it and then they buy it. Okay. Yeah. What do Americans like to buy the most in the automotive field? SUVs and trucks. Sure. Why the hell is a soccer mom buying a fully loaded Chevy Silverado for 60 grand when a sedan or even a minivan or even a small SUV will do? It's all about prestige, but also, too, um, commercials. Commercials is a perfect way for a company to say, hey, we got a deal for you. Oh, yeah. Instead of paying sixty grand for this truck, I'll, we'll sell it to you for $54,000. No, wait, there's more. I'm going to cut that price. You only pay $46,000. You don't think that's You don't think that's a huge cut? Well, how about this? We'll sell you this this truck for about twenty nine thousand. If they're that desperate to move inventory, that is one way to move in inventory. People will buy that because they realize, hey, I can get a good deal on on that. There's a reason why SUVs and trucks are popular. And they know how to trick people into thinking that they need something. Yeah. Do you actually need a truck? No. no. But is it a good deal? Yeah. Can you see yourself driving a truck if you got it for less money than other people would pay for it? Sure. Um, it, is it a huge social status pillar of society that you can show off to your neighbors you got a truck? Yeah. Yes. And Americans are dumb enough to believe in that. My dad leased an SUV in 1998. Yeah. And then he bought a different SUV in like 2004, 2005. Which was the expedition. Which was the expedition. He never needed that car. Yeah. He could have lived without it. Yeah. My dad was actually thinking about buying a Toyota High a, a Toyota Highlander. <laughs> Although this was after he moved into his current house. I think you've been there. Yeah, yeah, you've actually been there once. His current house? Yeah. I've been there multiple times. Okay. So Which after means... the fact that he bought his Kia Forte five he then said, I should really buy myself a bigger car. And then I convinced my dad not to sell his current car because you know why? He moving anywhere else. And you know what? That car does everything for him just well, gets good gas mileage, and it's easy to park. You know what? If he would have bought the Toyota Highlander, he would never be able to fully use it. Yeah, it's great to have extra space and that. Oh, yeah, you can, you can have... Uh, Comfort for five without a problem, or uh, a, th a third row seat if you wanted to. Sure, yeah. He would never use it. No. He would never use it to his full extent. No, he doesn't. And it would have been a, it. It, it would have costed him more money to pay for fuel. Yeah. And you know what? Because they're terrible gas guzzlers. Yeah. It they're known for that. They're renowned for that. It would be better off you, you keeping the same car after the fact that, that you move. If you're moving across the country, that'd be the one time where you would need an SUV is you're going to fully use all the space needed. Then when you get to where you need to, you sell that thing and you get another car. Because you'll never, ever use the space on it. It's like with Frederick. He got an SUV, but he never seemed to have used it beyond more than maybe once or twice that he may have used it for something. And even that's a stretch. He really didn't use it for what it was, the purpose of, of having one is. The average American who has a pickup truck doesn't even have, um, doesn't use it for what a truck is meant to do. Yeah. And you know what? 
They get it because they're told to get it. Yeah, it's American exceptionalism of uh, you are you are a very successful American if you show the world that that you bought a pickup truck, but so did all of the sixty uh, percent of all the other motherfuckers that got a truck too. And they say they're exceptional workers as well, but I know a lot of hardworking people that own beaters for cars, and they don't eat. They don't need a truck to show their status of how much they work. It's usually their clothing that says it all. They're filthy. They're ragged. Um, they, they don't need a pickup truck to show how hard they, they work in this country. Yeah. Because even still, even if they got a shit pickup truck used, 30, 40 years old, they still won't be able to afford repairs or even gas for it. I made use of my pickup. You are the only individual that who's owned a truck that's actually used it for what it was. And it's not a big pickup truck. You had a compact yep, truck. Time, I had dirt in the back of there. I moved uh, wood for people, for friends, yeah. and their dads uh, that requested. They said, hey, can you uh, invite your friend over that has a truck? I got some stuff I got to move. I did so much with that truck. I feel like uh, it was worth having for, for the time that I had it. Definitely. Um, what do you think? Should we end on this note? I'm kind of slightly buzzed and uh, kind of feeling off anyway. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we could certainly end, end know, this. Uh, celebration I'm, for... The polecat. Polecat. I don't know. My head's kind of in a fog right now for some reason. I don't uh, know why. Well, we have pizza coming. That too. I I ate this morning at around ten, and I'm kind of like feeling out of it. So hopefully the pizza comes soon because I'm gonna start to uh, throwing was, shit around like a hoosquill. He's going to get hangry. Oh yeah. And then you know me. Yeah. When I get hangry, I get ugly. And I don't mean to do it, but when I'm a, when I'm a hangry to to the point that I am no longer amused by anything, um, don't take it too personal. But when Husk is hangry, you get the fuck out of my way. Oh, here's something. Easy do-it-yourself crochet face mask. It's crochet. That bet don't do anything. Actually, what it's there for is to cover the mask you're wearing. Yeah, I think that's it. I hope so, because if you're just wearing the crochet... You may as well wear a scarf. You may as well wear a scarf. Yeah. You know what? I will say this. The one industry that is absolutely booming right now is the mask yeah. industry. Not just. The mask, the soap, the hand sanitizer, yep. toilet paper. All their sales are up. For sure. For sure. Especially for ones that are making medical grade customized masks. You know what? I think uh, this ain't going away. I, I mean, it will eventually go away, but as far as mask wearing, it'll be an optional thing in society that I think a lot of people will probably continue because they know that, hey, I have not gotten sick at all last year and I still feel good. While you might still get the sniffles or sore throat, it didn't last so long. But you're keeping yourself healthy from the bad shit that you don't need to fight through. And you're keeping yourself strong for the stuff that does get through. I don't know. Hmm. Um, so this guy's got a hack for people that wear glasses and it fogs up. Uh -huh. The mask fogs up their glasses. He's expecting us to put tape underneath where the glasses meet the mask. I'm not putting tape on my face every day. That's what he shows. Tape on his face. I don't think that's... Uh... Honestly, you're, you're better off using some kind of coating to uh, coat the inside and outside of the lens. Yeah. That's more effective than putting tape on your face. I'm not going to put tape on my face. I find it stupid. I mean, hey, if it actually works, good on him, but... I'm not putting tape on my face. It's surgical tape, but still. Still, it's not worth my time putting tape on. Um, 
then it almost kind of be like, I'm a football player, but not really. Hmm. I have to cut down the glare on my face, so I'm going to use surgical tape to... After you say that, it doesn't sound so bad. Football poos? Football poos. Also, there is something we can talk about. What's that? Football? So, well, no, but you're talking about poos. Uh, so, recently, you, you've been thinking about your first, your your persona. Oh, yeah. Would you like to talk about that? I've just been toying around with the idea of possibly uh, making a husky version of the sourpuss. A husky puss, Aww. if you will. Sour husk. Sour husk, husky puss. Uh, it'll be primarily the same color palette. Oh, yeah. The one thing I really haven't looked into yet that I want to look into is the face markings. Is the face markings because most husks don't have they, eye, eye dots. Yep. They have a more symmetrical pattern on their face, as does your Sona. Nearly about 90% of all husks are incredibly facially symmetrical. The one thing I would do, if I can't do an eye dot, I will do, uh, uh, what is it called? The mascara? No, no. Uh, because most husks have like a black mascara around their eyes anyway. No, I, I'm not going to wear makeup. No, no, no. So, oh, I know, I know what you mean, I know right. what you mean, I know what you mean. No, what I would look into then would be, instead of the monochromatic... Oh, yeah, you'll be, um, you'll have different eye colors, right? Or homochromatic. Homo is the same. Yeah, so, so that'd be it, heterochromidia or something like that. Yeah. Which is different color eyes. To make, to make up for the, the lack of eye dot. You could totally do that. It'll be on the same face, it'll be on, on the same side of the face, just it'll be in your eye. Yeah. Yeah, you, you could totally do it like that. Yeah. That way, that'd be the only thing, the only major change, and really, it's there, it's just in a different way. It's representative right. in a different way. So I'm, I'm thinking about reaching out to the original person that did my, well, not the original. That was Tiger Star. No, she was the per first person that did my badge. Um... Neon Slushy is the first person that updated my ref sheet. Okay. The original artist that did my ref sheet was a different artist that I found at MFF uh, that helped me to originally put it onto paper uh, with a lot of changes that I ended up making to it eventually. The more I looked at it, I had a offset leg. Ah. Uh -huh. I had a different colored leg. Uh, very much a a, a non-symmetrical poos. Ah. Originally, but uh, as the more I looked at it, it just looked like a big sock. Ah. So I yes, decided yes. I had I had a sock. Yes. Ah. <laughs> but I decided to get rid of the sock in in lieu of the uh, the, the the stripe. Ah. And the and the asymmetrical part. One on your face. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, look forward to seeing myself as a husky. Uh, it should be fun. I will teach you how to swirl. Ah. Uh, and then I will just hiss and swat. But in swirl form. That would be most adorable. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm feeling tired. But Ah, uh, it's the wine. Well, Drink that. water. I'm just, uh, and that my schedule, I'm still getting used to that, but I have a feeling that's going to still change some more. So it's, my my upcoming month is going to be so fucked up with my sleep schedule. What I'm gonna time be, did you wake up today? Eight. I slept until eight and I was up. I'm so used to waking up, for, well, for two, for two years, waking up at, at the same time consecutively. You know, it gets hard to get out of that. 
Yeah. Then my new company is, is telling me to uh, wake up uh, or to get to work at 5.30, so I wake up at 3.30. Because um, it's good to be up a little bit, but also it sucks. you got to be up for a bit. Welcome to my world. Yeah. I'm up at 3, 3.30. We're up at the same time. Yep. Well, I think we can end it here. Yeah, and I'm going to like harass people for pizza and whatnot. Yep. It should be oh soon. my goodness! Get water in you. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just hoping that once I get a schedule, and hopefully stick with it, that my body will adjust to slowly to that. But the weird thing about this company is that every year the schedule changes. It's not like a permanent schedule that that you can get. Apparently, it's kind of like a stock market of what you can get. It's like first come, first serve. You get your schedule, and then you're that's your schedule for the year and whatnot, which one that's interesting too, that's bullshit because now you, you get to compete for the same schedule that you want, which is kind of dumb. Me, frankly, I would rather keep a schedule and stick with it because what happens if one year that's, that sucks. You get used to a schedule and then next year you force yourself to do something different. If you didn't get your old schedule, I just find that so stupid. I just thought that once once you're new, you bid into a schedule and you can bid into one that's available when it opens up or, or whatnot. Yeah. I will find out. Yep. The the bidding process is in April and I guess they give me enough time to understand this company a bit more. So I don't know. My schedule will be bouncing around. I'm sure in the next two, three, four months. So I'm going to be incredibly grouchy as fuck, uh, just to because I am not a person that likes constant change in my schedule. I'm very much set in my ways. Once I adjust, I don't want to get out because you know what? It's hard enough to adjust to it anyway. Would rather stick to it so that eventually I get used to it and then I'm not so pissed off about it. The constant change just pisses me off. But hey. Kind of have to do what I have to do. This is a good job, so I'm willing to go as far as I can for it, but um, especially if it's union. Yeah. So. There's a funny video. I have to find it, though. Uh, somebody at work sent me, well, sent me, showed me. Uh, basically, it's uh, the faces that you make under your mask. Mm hmm. Because I do that a lot when I'm working and I'm concentrating. I, and I find myself doing this when I have my mask on that I don't normally do when I don't wear a mask. And this guy just basically shows all the different faces that he makes while he's working because he has a mask on his face. It's just like, I don't know. You, you, rub, oh, your printed, lips, huh? you rub your lips against the mask because it's against your face. But nobody can see it. It's I'll just, just funny. I'll just have my like put put like a tiny penis in in oh my god. No, no. Just just no. put a tiny penis in there and then or have one like against your, your cheek and then <laughs> and then you have like a dick on your cheek or something. <laughs> that could what be are you doing under your mask there? Nothing. I have a cheek penis. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Okay, I think we can end I this. think it's time to end that after cheek penis. Oh, so. yeah, it's cheek penis. Hey, look, we didn't go, we didn't mention anything about... Defecation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's incredible. You'll have to put that in a, in a hashtag non-defecated podcast. podcast. All right, well, in, in this case, I'm going to sign off, so... Okay. Thank you for tuning in for... Another episode of the Zooming Who's Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Dustin Husky. I'm Kurt Antarpas. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.